All right. It's good that more. It's good that morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. And this message that I want to talk about the door of the lesson, kind of a little bit of both, I guess. God spoke to me, so I feel like He spoke to me. He wants somebody else to hear this too. So, anyway, before we start, we're going to be reading in Ezekiel 37. And before we start the lesson, Brother Evan, you pray over the lesson this morning. Most precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for this opportunity. Dear Father, touch upon your servant this morning. Give her that wisdom and knowledge she needs to bring your message forth. Touch her ears and her hearts. Touch her ears to hear this lesson and our hearts to receive it when we can put it in our lifestyle. Dear Father, we thank you for everything you did for us. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Ezekiel 37. I'm just going to read a couple of verses. If you have not read this chapter, you need to read it. It's very interesting and really pretty awesome. Yes, it is. But it said, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Here's a verse that kind of hit me. And it caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and they were very dry. You may sit down. You may be seated, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, my kids will use that. <laughs> I get kind of broke. The other day I was sitting at my house, and I just moved in town, and I'm still unpacking, but I was sitting there, I thought, oh, I really need to get moving. But I just didn't feel like, you know, how you're tired, but you do what you gotta do, it needs to be done. Well, the Holy Spirit just spoke to me. He said, get up out of that valley or dry bones. Yes, sir. I got up and started moving. And I got a lot done once I started moving. Why do I say that? We as Christians get in, I call it, I don't say it's not a spiritual dry bones state. We get where we're wondering, well, I ain't been feeling much from God lately. How many of y'all heard that? Mm -hmm. How many said that to yourself? I really don't know what God wants me to do. Hmm. What am I supposed to do? I go to church every Sunday. That's good. But are you getting into what's going on in the church on Sunday when you sit in the pew? God didn't call us to be pew, pew warmers. Amen? I'm glad you're here. And I thank God for everybody that does come. But if you're struggling in your walk with God, think about why. It's not God's fault, people. It ain't the church's fault. It's not our pastor. It ain't Brother John's fault or Brother Leon's fault. Because they're doing what God called them to do. They're preaching the word that God laid on their heart. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Are you listening it to what's being said? And are you applying it to your heart? Now, I want to say this, too. Brother John comes up. He, he speaks what the Lord laid on his heart. And, boy, it hits me hard. Man. I, I can feel it. But the person next to me is kind of like, you ever been there? Feel the spirit all over the place. And the person next to you is like, you might go, what's your problem? Give slap them. You know what I'm saying? Slap them back in. What's wrong? we got to realize that when God sends a word out, it's going to hit different people in a different way. It's going to hit, it may hit Brother Ed Bingo right away. But then Shelby might be later on in the week, she'll be thinking about it, and then it hits her. So don't catch ourselves judging people. How many, all right, you don't have to raise your hand, but be honest with yourself. How many of you judge people and wonder what is wrong? Why can't they feel what I feel? Because we're all different. But, now, in 1 Corinthians, and probably all of you probably know where I'm going, 12 and 12. For as the body is one, that's us, that's the church, as one, and has many members, we're a little slow today, we are a little you know, good thing we're not having to you know, build a person on what's here, but you know what? God can still use you. 
And all members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. We are one body. But, yeah, excuse me about my toys. We, we as Christians, we're all different. We got this one little shape here. We got one, maybe it's shaped like this. And another one that's a little bit different color. Amen. This one's a different color. We all have our own personality. We all have our own way of doing things. I guess I'm playing with my magnets up here. But one thing about it, just because we're not all the same, the church would not go very far if everybody was Brother Leon. You know what I'm saying? The church would go very far if everybody was Brother John. You gotta have that's just true, so you know what I'm saying? You gotta have something to <laughs> Gotta keep things going. God made me the way I am for a purpose. You guys may not understand it, and some of y'all may not like it, but I am who I am. But if we take all of our little pieces, our little body, and join together in one mind, one accord, we can come a circle and be one, but as one. Oh, you like my magnets? Yeah. I still my grandson's magnets. But guys, show me up. Just because we're different shapes or a different color or a little bit different than somebody else does not mean that God's not going to use us in not, his body. You're not supposed to do. Still. Oh, I borrowed them, brother. I borrowed them. I'm, ooh, what did I do? That's good. Somebody catch me. Keep me on my toes. The same thing, you no. Know, our rally of dry bones, it, it, it affects us in our Christian. And I guess if I uh, with the title, I'd say spiritual dryness. Where are we? Folks? I say this with love, so I hope I say this. If I offend anybody, be decent, no one's going to talk to me about it. You get out of God what you put into it. You get a cake mix, right? Everyone else had a cake mix, right? If you don't add the right ingredients, that cake's no good. You might as well leave it in the box. The church, Christian family, my church family, same way. It's going to take the weird ones, the serious ones, you know, whatever. It's going to take all of us together to make our church what it is. I have no problem admitting I'm weird. Amen. It's, it's me. And I'm not going to change. I thought about it. For about five minutes, and I was like, I can't do it. I can't do it. Thank you, brother. My grandkids have told me I'm weird. They tell me all that stuff. But they, they know that about me. I'm, I'm not, I don't offend me. We as Christians need to get up off our butt. Now, I ain't talking B U T T, I'm talking B U T. Bottom sounds better. Yeah. Well, I wasn't talking about that. I'm talking about this butt. butt. But, but God, I can't. But God, this. But God, that. But God, we got to quit the butt because God don't want that. Because God doesn't. How many of you, you don't have to raise your hand, but I want you to twitch a little bit. God has laid something on your heart for you to do. You just kind of put it back on the back burner. Well, but God, I don't know. But God, I don't know if I could do that. But God, how can I do that? But God, I'm only a woman. But God, I'm only a child. That's not what God wants. I promise you, if God has laid something on your heart to do, he has opened the door for you to go through it. He is not going to lay something on your heart and then lock the door. Well, Shelby, I want you to do this, but the door's locked. You have to wait till I unlock it. When he lays it on Shelby's heart, he's dealing with he's working, his work is in progress. Have you ever had somebody in your heart and God tells you to call? I don't want to call them and talk too much, Lord. They don't want to shut up. I ain't gonna lie, I've been there. But when I do, then God blesses me. Because lots of times that person's going through a battle and they need to hear from me. Not from me, but from hear God. When God lays something on your heart, He's using you as a vessel to help someone. Somebody could be saved. Absolutely. I, I have been there. I, I've 
I, I remember one time I said, Lord, I just can't handle no more. My, my mind feels like scrambled brain, scrambled eggs, ugh, scrambled eggs. I just don't know how much more I can take. And I was at work sitting in the office. I was doing uh, physical therapy. Uh, I was what they call restorative, baby. I was talking to physical therapy with clients. In the, and this girl came in. I, I'd seen her before, but I never really talked with her. And she came in. I don't know what she came in for. And then next thing I know, she got to talk about the Lord. I thought, thank you, Lord. And she just lifted my spirits to me and remind me that my God is able. My God, my God can do it. How about your God? My, my God can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. How about your God? If you're serving the same God I'm serving, he can do it and he will do it. You can't give up on him. The same thing we got to realize, that spoke to me, you know, sometimes we're going through a battle and how many have been in battle before? You think, Lord, I just don't know how much more I can take. Every victory that's won, sometimes you have to go through the battle. Sometimes you're going to get some bruises. You're going to get some pain and suffering along the way. But once you go through and you've got victory, you need a victory in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's worth it. A football player, I don't know if anybody's a football player in here or not, but what, I don't know what journey is. Being a football player, and you're playing football, and you're out there, and you're whatever you are, banging and playing and trying to get the football, and you get victory, you shout victory, but yet too, they went through a lot of banging and clanging and bruises and all that stuff for that victory. The same thing goes with our Christian walk. You may go through a little bit of banging. You may you may hit feel like rock bottom. But you know what? There is victory coming. The God on the mountain is to the God in the valley. We have to remember that, guys. Don't turn to things of this world to think it's going to make you feel better. It might for a while, but if you get really, really down and out, nine times out of ten in the world turns its back on you. But God don't. I promise you, I tell you this from the depths of my heart, God will not turn his back. He will not let go of you. And there's so many times he's reaching out for you and you just, you just keep pulling away. He reaches where you keep pulling away. Run into the embrace of his arm. It's like some of you you got these little babies and stuff, little ones, and they get hurt, and they come running to you, crying, and you grab them and hold them and tell them it's okay, and it comforts them. That's the same way our Savior does to us. If we just run into his arms, he'll comfort us. Some of you talk about fall asleep while you're praying, they felt bad, but then I read something uh, Facebook, it said, what better love is there than to fall asleep in your father's arms? I thought, no, I don't feel bad about falling asleep. When I get tired and I can't sleep, I start praying. I really do. Last time I next thing, oh, I'm asleep. Because I, 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 I relax and come in peace with my master. And I fall asleep in his arms. I thank you for that. Amen? Amen. Like I said, uh, I had to bring my phone up here because uh, I ran out of ink in my printer, so I couldn't do it. I hate writing. We as Christians need to get up out of that valley of dry bones that we're sitting in. And every one of us has done it at one time or another. I'm not saying you're there now. But at one time or another, you have sat in a valley of dry bones. You have sat there and thought, I don't know what else to do. God, I just, I just don't know what else to do. And the best thing you can do is come to his house in good fellowship with good Christian uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. Get into his word. Pray. I love that song the Dove Brothers sings. It's all I can, uh, well, uh, they talk about you can't do much. It's not a teacher or, or a singer, but they said, what can I do? They said, you can pray. You can pray. The church, most churches that, um, and went through battles, lots of time, what held us together was some of the little gray-haired prayer warriors that prayed for that church. And I can say that the Church of God. I remember when I started going, Sister Billy Joe, Sister Wood, Sister Grant, Sister Smith, I loved her. She always had peppermints. She only gave them to certain people. She had to like to give them. But <laughs> seriously, they think, well, no, no, no. Only certain ones. But anyway, those little ladies, were faithful. They couldn't do a lot in the church, 
They couldn't, you know, they can't do a lot of the manual labor that had to be done. I don't know if any of them could sing. I never heard any of them sing, except for Sister uh, Green. She could sing some. But what I'm saying, the biggest thing they did for that church was pray. They prayed for that pastor. They thought Brother Allen was the cat's meow. You know what I'm saying? They loved him. And that's what it is. They supported him. And that's what we need to do, too, for our church. I don't know if you guys do it or not, but we need to pray for our pastors. We're blessed we got two. Amen. That's double the, I mean, double the pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. But we are blessed. We may be small in number, but I believe we're strong in power because we trust God. It's like that song, I shall not be moved. There's times I want to quit. I don't know why. There's times that I want to quit and say, is it worth it? Why do I want to get up and go? Then when I walk through the door, God reminds me. I'm serious. Yes, yesterday when I was praying, that door opened. And I, I, I come out of the room and I walked out. And I said, welcome, Holy Spirit. That's just like God said, I'm here. Maybe just me and you, but I'm here. And sometimes that's what we need, just you and him. Sometimes the best blessing you get is when you take time for just you and him. I've been... Shelby was telling me the other day that they're going through they're going through some situation. I don't know if she won't mind I ain't saying what or anything that's up between them and God. But she said, now now no, we all got together and joined hands and prayed. Man, amen. You know what, know what the devil does? He gets mad. I can't believe they've done that. Everything I'm throwing on them, and they're gonna pray? Amen. You better pray. Amen. There is I've had bad days, and I just learned to back up. I just stopped saying, Lord, I'm sorry I forgot to pray. Don't start your day without prayer. Don't end your day without prayer. And then between the morning and night, keep a praying. Amen? Can we pray? Can you pray too much? The Bible says pray without ceasing. Amen? So where can you go wrong? Amen. I'm going to tell you a little secret. You may not realize this. God spoke to me. And this, this, this old girl, I choked on it. Had a, sat at a friend. She mentioned her name. And I was instantly mad. I hated this girl for a while. And I went to church. And it eat me up. The bad part about the hatred that you have in it eats you up. You're not hurting nobody else. You're hurting yourself. Anyway, I went to church. And Sister Georgia, bless her heart, I said, what do I do? This is driving me nuts. I, you just mentioned her name and I get mad. What she told me? She had the audacity to tell me, pray for her. I said, do what? She said, pray for her. Pray for God to bless her. And I told her, I said, are you serious? She said, pray for God to bless her. And said to pray for your enemies. And I'm going to tell you, you ever been there when you try to say something and you're just choking on the word? Oh, oh. I started praying, Lord, bless her. Could I say it like, no, I'm going like, mm, Lord, mm. Lord, I, mm. Really? Lord, bless her. Lord, I should touch her. Pray for her. And once I kind of swallowed my pride and my anger, God helped me. There's nothing that you can pray about that God won't help you with. But there's a little secret to that. You gotta believe. You gotta trust it. You gotta have faith. You gotta believe people. You can't you can't just say, I'm gonna I'm put you on a dude here. Sure, the Bible shows you do it. Okay, but do you believe it? Well, I don't know. You know, somebody said it's okay. Yeah, it's supposed to, but but do you believe it? Well, I'm working on it. I'm trying. Come on, guys, you've got to believe. Right. There's power, like Brother Leon said. There's power in prayer. There's power in the name of Jesus. Satan will run. He will flee when you call on the name of Jesus. Put him under your feet, like Sister Karen said. Don't put him under your feet. Right. I used to say, get behind me, Satan. Then somebody said, you don't want your enemy behind you. I thought, that's a good point. I want him under my feet. I don't want to see no part of him. Amen? 
Because I serve an awesome God. Amen? Amen. Like I said, I really, it's amazing. Toby Mack had a song, I was listening to Halo. And Toby Mack was singing a song, and I, all I can remember on it is it said, Keep Walking. No, my daughter, she probably knows the song. But I want to read this. It says, Keep Walking, Soldier, Keep Moving On. Keep Walking Until the Morning Comes. Keep walking, soldier. Keep moving on and lift your head. It ain't over yet. It ain't over yet. I heard that. I thought, wow, that's right. As long as there's a breath in your body, God still has a purpose for you. God still says keep walking. You ain't going to see where you're going with your head hung down. Have you ever tried to walk with your head hung down? You run into something. Amen? I remember one time a friend of mine let me borrow his bike. I was a teenager. He had a 10 speed. Man, I went to him, he used to go to the store for him. And they'd give us a cord to go to the store get their chips and stuff. He let me ride his 10 speed. I was in hog heaven, man. I was riding that bike. And I was just a and down. Got paid attention. I hit the curb. I ran into the curb. Boop, about killed myself. Because I wasn't paying attention. I had my head down. So you see the riders, they ride with their head down. How did I do that and not run into something? I ran into a curb. You know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't paying attention. If you're running into things in your life and you feel like you keep hitting the walls and you keep bouncing off the walls and you feel like you can't get nowhere, do you have your head held up? Are you looking up and praising God? Now, and I'm not saying walk around like this either because you're going to run into something. Be smart. Keep your eyes forward. Trust God with every move in you. There is nothing that you do or any decision you make, you should put God in the first in it. He needs to be the one that helps you. He won't give you answers. Now, if you ask God for something, he's saying, no, Lacey, don't do it. And Lacey's going, I'm going to do it. Lacey, don't do it. And God's speaking to her, and Lacey does it anyways, and her world goes, whose fault is it? Amen? I've done it. I've argued. How many of you can raise your hand and be honest with you? You argued with God. Amen. You chickens, raise your hands up. <laughs> We've all done it. God says, I want you to do something. Nah. No, no, no. That ain't for me. I never thought I'd be up here singing. I'm not the greatest singer, but I like singing. I do it for the enjoyment of God. Thank goodness he's. He blessed me with what I can do. Thank you, Joe. Good job. Thank you, brother. But yeah, I'm nothing without God. I remember riding a church bus and we used to sing and they always tell me, you don't sing like a fifty off key. <laughs> Look where I'm at today. If I were to listen to them. <laughs> Look at her now. The girl got a voice like you don't believe. But sisters and friends sometimes are the worst critics. They don't they don't understand them. I remember uh, when I grew up we had 12 12 street gang and we rode the bus to Pioneer Girls in church. And some of those kids were some of the ones that told me I couldn't sing. Well, one of them, I went to her church while I was in Michigan and I sang for her. And I wanted to say, na, 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 na. I can sing a little bit. <laughs> don't ever give up on God. God, God has a purpose for you. Cindy and Brother Roger clean our church. Some people think, oh, that's a blessing for us. Yes, we get to come into a clean church on Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. Cindy, I'm sure she scrubs the toilet once in a while. Big deal. It is a big deal. I hate cleaning toilets. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Roger, for what you do. Amen. 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 How many of you ever thanked him for cleaning our church? Yeah. Amen. How many of you ever thanked Brother John for bringing the word of God to us? How many of you ever thanked Brother Leon for what he's done? Amen. Sister Karen, little firecracker. She teaches the kids. She goes to We Church. I've done We Church one time. Oh, my hat's off to her. <laughs> my hat is off to her. I appreciate her. Amen. But you stop to think, Sister Andrea has just been filling in left and right for us. I thank God for that. Amen? Amen. 
be thankful of our body. Our church body is special. We are blessed. Sister Jen does a wonderful job three, three weeks out of the month. I do it one month. Y'all get stuck with me for one month off. But still, be thankful for these people. Sister Amanda, I've watched her grow so much over the years. This last year, I watched her grow so much teaching the kids. It's a blessing to teach our children. Amen. I have taught from the little ones to the teenagers. I've done different things with kids. I went to church camp and all this stuff. And I thank God that he allowed me to. I'm thinking on that one. Church camp. <laughs> yeah. It's a blessing. Be thankful to those that reach out. When they, they take our kids to IYC, is that what it's called? That's a blessing. I went one year. That's a lot of work these people put into this. And you parents say, all right, my kids are going for a few days. Be thankful for the ones that take your children, love them enough to take them. Amen? Amen. So just, just don't take things for granted. Just shake our dry bones out. Rack it, let them rack together and just start blessing God. God's doing something in this church. God has something in store for this church. He has something in store for you. But it does no good for God to send the message to you if you're sitting there and not allowing yourself to receive it. Amen? Just shake up those spiritual dry bones, people, because God's fixing the mood in Jesus' Lord family worship center. Amen? Amen? That's all. Praise God.